Hi, I'm Peter, and this is Go Verb and Am. Here's an idea. YouTube channels are generational. Case in point, Mike Rugnetta and PBS Idea channel and everybody who has ever watched that channel and then went on to do something else, and Mike himself. For those of you who've been watching Go Verb and Am for a while, you may remember that uh, back when I interviewed Emily Eifler way, way, way back at the beginning, uh, she talked about how one of the things that got her to start doing YouTube videos is she watched an episode of Idea Channel with Mike and she thought to herself, Oh, that's just cultural criticism. I can do that. <laughs> and I think that's an amazing thing. And so I definitely wanted to talk to Mike because I know he, that Emily is not the only person that he has inspired uh, to create a channel and, you know, just put themselves out there. And I think that's very important. So this week we're doing things a little bit different. Mike had a lot of really good stuff to say. And at first I thought maybe it would be difficult to figure out, you know, what to include and what not to include, you know how much I was willing to sacrifice for time, how much I should stress over audio, and then I decided, with my channel, I can do whatever I want. And so, in the spirit of longer videos, I've decided to upload basically all of it. <laughs> with that said, I've got about an hour, a little bit over an hour of footage, so I will be spacing them out in about videos of 20 minutes, or yeah, about 20 minutes long. Uh, so, enough from me, let's just jump straight into it, and then at the end, we'll have a question session. All right, you ready? Go. All right, so before we get started, there is something that is worth mentioning, and that is that this interview was recorded on August 21st, 2014. The point of me mentioning this is some of the information is going to be, well, old. For example, the IRC channel that Mike is going to mention isn't really used all that much anymore, and he's already done the episode on hot sauces and kill a kill. So uh, just keep that in mind when you're watching that some of this information is a little old, which is kind of cool, because you're kind of getting a snapshot back in time to how things were. A simpler time, as they say. All right, let's get back to this. My name is Mike Rugnetta. I am the writer and host of the YouTube show PBS Idea Channel. Um, I'm also one third of a live lecture-based performance art thing called Meme Factory, uh, and I work with a performance organization in New York City called Avant Media uh, that makes new music works uh, and new performance. So I also sometimes uh, write music and programs and stuff for uh, theater and dance and performance art. How did you get started with PBS Idea Channel? Um, how far back are you interested in knowing? Before Idea Channel, I was on YouTube, yes. Um, I used to write and host for, and, do, and I did like a little bit of production for a web show called Know Your Meme. Uh, which was made here in New York. It was uh, the companion web series to the website that everybody knows now as the database of used to be just online culture culture. Now, you know, all kinds of all kinds of things that its users designate as being worthy of the title meme. Before that, so I got that job because um, my friends and I had this uh, performance art piece, basically, uh, where we would do this very fast-paced lecture-style performance about internet culture. Uh, so there were three of us up on stage, and each of us had uh, a computer, and each of us had a, uh, a projector behind us, like a projection screen, and we were each running a, a keynote presentation. We were, the idea was that we were talking very, very fast about uh, internet culture was what, you know, was the sort of umbrella that we had developed for the show uh, called Meme Factory. And the idea was that we were sort of like approximating the experience of being online and that there are lots of things coming at you, lots of simultaneous streams of information and you're never really going to get everything, that you're, you're just going to have this wash of media come over you and that your brain is going to pick out the important or interesting or funny parts. Uh, and so that was the first time that I had sort of tried to smash together parts of popular culture and we would try to work in these little bits of theory and academic style argument and stuff. And so that led with to me working with Know Your Meme, uh, which then got, you know, a little like a little bit of notice. Uh, and so then I ended up on a couple other things because of the 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 small amount of New York notice that Meme Factory and Know Your Meme had. One of them was Off Book, which was PBS Digital Studios first uh, YouTube show. And so the Digital Studios people saw saw me and my Meme Factory pals, Patrick and Steve, on Off Book, and they were like, what does that guy do? Does that guy want a, does that guy want a web show? And they gave, they literally gave me a call. The way, the way that I tell the story is that I'm sitting at, I was sitting at my kitchen table 
writing music for a show that I was working on and the phone rings and it's a, a number that's not in my phone book from DC. And if you're a freelancer, a phone, a phone number that's not in your phone book, that's money calling. So you're like, yes, oh, all right, who could this be? And, and I pick up the phone and I said, hey, this is Mike. And uh, the person on the other end is like, hey, Mike, this is Lauren from PBS. Yes, that PBS. We we're wondering if you wanted to make a web show. And I'm like, it's, I, uh, this, I think the answer to this is always yes. I think, I mean, that's not actually how it went, but that's the, it's funnier than how it actually went. What surprised you about the channel? Oh, the whole thing. Every, every I have not, I mean, I, I try very hard to not have grand expectations and to just try to live and live in and enjoy the thing that I'm doing. So when I started Idea Channel, I had no idea that we would, you know, now we have almost, we, ha we have just crossed the 550,000 subscriber mark, uh, which is crazy to me. That's the size of a small nation. Uh, and when we first started it, I thought like, well, this will be a fun thing to do for a little while. Because I had the freelancer mentality of this will be a fun thing to do for a little while. And now I've been doing it for three years. Um, when we first put together, when I was developing like the idea of the show with Cornhaber Brown, who produces it, and Digital Studios, one of the things that, that I really wanted to try to push was that the the final product is the, is the conversation that happens, not the video. And so everything that we're doing is, is not about this video that you're watching, but trying to inspire people to have a conversation, hopefully in the comment section, so that these people can have conversations with each other. Uh, and the degree to which the subscribers of Idea Channel have, have been willing to do that has just been mind-blowing it's so humbling and so amazing that all of these that we can we make a video that is just this two things that you never thought would go together and that's the point that you never thought they would go together and we just smash them together and see what happens and that there are hundreds of thousands of people who say like all right let's I'll go on this walk with you and see where this leads uh, and that is that's insane um, I get recognized in the street sometimes, which is really bizarre. It's really, it's, it's great. And it's, it's really uh, like, it's like an honor to have someone come up to you and to say like, I watch your show. I really, really like it. Thank you for making it, you know, like shake my hand. It's great to meet you. And it's just, it like makes my robot heart beat. As far as YouTube as a whole, I mean, it's, you know, I'm in it every day, so it's hard for me to say what things about it have changed or occurred that are, that are surprising. You know, it's the, the stereotypical thing of just it, it moves so fast, it's constantly changing, and that's what's exciting and amazing about it, and that there are always new people making incredible things, and it's open to the, to the public to, to a degree that it doesn't exist anywhere else. You know, people like Emily can watch Idea Channel. You know, like in your video, she says, oh, this is just, I saw Mike's show, and I thought, oh, this was just cultural criticism. I could do this. That's the, that's the point. Like, when she said that, I, I stood up in my studio and went, yeah! Yes, it worked because that's the idea that's what idea channel is for so that people can watch me do it and be like I could do that and then they make their own awesome channel so that's you know that's that's another thing that we could only have hoped would have happened and the fact that it actually did is is so great where does idea channels discussion take place yeah, I mean, we have, Idea Channel has, just from a purely formal and technological standpoint, uh, there's a pretty active tag on Tumblr. Uh, there are probably a couple posts on it every day. We have a subreddit, um, and there is an IRC channel that people hang out in, uh, which, is, which is really exciting. And actually, that was a thing that I was really shocked when we started to approach the idea of, okay, the community of people is getting big enough, and uh, there are enough people now that, that, you know, there's a significant amount that find the comment section on YouTube to be an inhospitable environment, even though our comment section is, is very, very good. Just, you know, I don't know if it's technologically or the uh, character limit that happens, right? It's hard to have a natural conversation uh, in the YouTube comment thread that when I asked, okay, so we, if you want to move to another place to have a conversation, where, where should we end up? be going. Where, where do you guys want to go? And the number one suggestion that I got via email and on Twitter was IRC. 
uh, that people want. It's the thing that closely, that most closely resembles having a conversation, uh, which, since that is the idea of the show, made me very, very happy uh, that people were like, no, we want to be able to have a real-time text-based conversation with people who are interested in talking about the topics on the show and like related things. And so, uh, yeah, there's a, there's an active there's an active IRC that uh, that people hang out on, which Hank Green actually made fun of me for once. He said he was like, "Of course, your channel, you guys have an IRC. It's perfect." <laughs> like I had somehow stole. I don't know if he felt like I stole that from like he had ideas for maybe an IRC, but he didn't get to it first. So, haha, Hank Green. <laughs> Have you, have you popped in before and just been like, hey guys, what's up? Yeah, I used to actually hang, so I spend regrettably little time on the IRC these days, but when it first started, I was there most days. Uh, and I don't think I ever saw it drop below maybe like 70, 60 or 70 people. So yeah, it's a pretty good, and you know, it's IRC, so there's a lot of people idling and just hanging out and not saying anything, but there is a pretty, pretty frequent conversation. Uh, but just schedule-wise, the last six months, my life has been nuts, and so I just don't, I'm not even like at my house for a number of hours in a row, so I don't, I don't hang out on the IRC nearly as much as I, as I want to. But it's, I mean, I'm, like, I'm a very easy person to get a hold of. I very much think of myself as just a, a dude. Like, I'm not, I don't even really think of myself as like a guy with a YouTube channel that lots of people watch. Like I'm just a guy who talks to a camera sometimes. And I think that like when, when I show up in the IRC, it's very much like, it's kind of anticlimactic because I, I'm very, if, if someone wants to, this is why like we've done, Idea Channel has done a couple like, Mike will answer your questions about the, and people are excited about them because it's a different format and it's a break in the, in the, way that we normally do things, so it's a nice change of pace. But for the most part, anybody wants to ask me a question about the way Idea Channel is made, my background, my interests, what I'm, I'm, you just ask me on Twitter, it's, I'm very available, send me an email, like my personal email is all over the internet. I mean, the, the purpose, the purpose of the, the comment section on a YouTube video is, right, I think you, you ask, dif you ask different people that question and the answer is different because I, I very much feel like the way that you think of your video that you are putting on YouTube and the way that you create it from, from the ground up, from the very beginning, determines the utility of the technology that's around it. And so if, if you think of the comment section as having a particular purpose, while you are thinking about what your show is going to be, then you know, you can hope that it will, that you will effectively communicate that and that people will then use it for that purpose. And I think that the, 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 the disappointment that a lot of people have with the YouTube comment section is they just sort of, it's a given, it's a thing that's there, and so it's there, and so it's not worth thinking about because it's taken care of. And then what happens is it turns into, you know, it turns into a common, and what happens to commons, they experience tragedies. And so then, you know, that, then that's how the YouTube comment section has the, has the um, reputation that it does now, which is not the most sterling of things on the internet. Could you walk me through the process of creating an episode from beginning to end? Video from start to finish. Yeah. So the number one question I think I get asked uh, when I meet an Idea Channel fan is how do you come up with all of the ideas? And unfortunately, the answer to that question is incredibly boring. Uh, I stare at my bookshelf uh, like I meditate. Uh, though it doesn't look like meditation, it just looks like me staring at my bookshelf. Um, and I also think that it's, like, it's important to realize that you're kind of always open to inspiration and that it's not it's not like a thing that, that comes and hits you and you wait for it to happen, that you can, you can just uh, like open yourself to it as a state of, of being. This is sounding very, this is very metaphysical right now. But, you know, you, and you can, it's almost like a muscle, that it's a thing you can do and that you can exercise your creativity muscle and then sit down and like have creative ideas. You can sit down and you're like, okay, now is my creative time. So Idea Channel is a lot of that, is a lot of me sitting down and, and thinking to myself, okay, now is the time when I generate ideas. Now is the time when I try to figure out what aspects of things are worth trying to collapse into the same, into the same intellectual space. Uh, so after I have done that, after I have figured out what things I am interested in trying to draw a relationship to, uh, there's research, which usually takes about, uh, it, de it depends upon the episode. I think the longest I've ever researched something was about a month. And that was the uh, Does Math Exist episode. 
uh, because that's completely outside of my area of expertise. Uh, so I had to do a lot of reading and learning and figure out what was important to say and what people would expect me to say. Uh, but most of the time, a video takes between a day and three days to research. Uh, and then it takes about two work days to write, so 16 hours or so. Uh, and that includes things where I realize that, you know, I want to make a point and that's another thing I don't know, so I have to go and research that. So that's not 100% just sitting down and writing for 16 hours. And then it takes about an hour and a half to shoot. Um, and in there, there's back and forths with uh, the production company that I work with, with Corn Hipper Brown, with my director Morgan um, and the producer Andrew, where there'll be uh, outlines that they look at and they're like, oh, but did you think of this? Or like, oh, what about this other aspect of this thing? You know, fr bringing in another point of view, which is incredibly important to the type of work that, um, that we're trying to do. Uh, and then after it's shot, um, while I'm, right, so now I, after shooting, am back in the idea generation and researching phase. Um, Morgan is taking uh, the, our editor through um, the process of cutting together an idea channel and adding all of the assets and um, making it a video. And then we go back and forth. There are usually three revisions on that. Um, and then once there, those revisions are done, um, that's usually done, the revisions are usually done on Tuesday. So then I show up in the studio on Tuesday to shoot comment responses for the last video, which I have been picking throughout the week. Uh, and then I shoot the next week's episode. They tack the comment responses onto the existing episode that I have seen all the revisions for. And then that gets published on Wednesday afternoon. And that, you know, if, it's, if we've done it right, we're not working up until the last minute. Um, and that it's, it's done sometime on Tuesday evening slash Wednesday morning and then gets, gets uploaded at, you know, between 3 and 6 uh, Eastern Time. What does working with PBS bring to the table? Working with PBS has been really great. They bring a bunch of things to the show, most of which are resources, uh, that when they approached me and asked whether or not I would be interested in making a web show, it meant that there was already capacity for having an editor, et <clears throat> having, an editor uh, having, a, having a producer, you know, having a place to shoot, having all the equipment, which were things that I didn't have. Uh, you know, Know Your Meme was sim in a similar situation in that I was working with a production company. And so that makes it so that I can focus on like researching and writing and, and being available on social media and interacting with the audience. And I don't worry about editing things or gathering assets, though I do do a fair amount of you know, like, I think we should include this asset here and, and finding those things and gathering them. Um, it's also, I mean, it's, it's great to have the show affiliated with PBS. Like, PBS is um, a media organization that people know and respond to and respect. And it's really nice to be able to work with them on m making this, you know, like, huge, um, like, cultural presence to, to help it do things on the internet, right? Idea Channel was one of the first YouTube channels that PBS had ever, had ever put together, right? PBS National. Um, and so it's, it's been really great to work with them on like, you know, strengthening their internet presence and figuring out how to, how to translate all of the things that we, as you know, people who grew up watching PBS love about PBS, how to do that in a way that is entertaining for you know people like me right i want to make a show that i i would want to watch but also uh still makes sense to put pbs in the name pbs is really digital studios is is very much concerned with doing things right they really really want to do it they really want to nail it and get it right and that doesn't mean get it right for them so that they get the most views and they make all of the best, you know, uh, CPMs and get all of the advertising money because it's PBS. Um, that they really want to make a thing that feels like it belongs on the internet and feels like it was made by PBS and is people are excited to make it and people are excited to watch it. And that's the stuff that they are the most concerned with. And I think that shows with everything that they've released. All right, so the question for this first episode I'm going to ask you guys is, who's inspired you? Like, if you are somebody who is looking at doing a YouTube channel or somebody who is doing education online 
or in any venture, what are some of the things that have inspired you? What do you model yourself after? Let me know in the comments below or on Facebook or Tumblr or Twitter or wherever the hell, uh, maybe on the secret Go Verba Noun IRC channel, and uh, let me know what you think, because I'm curious. All right, guys, so let's go ahead and jump into this next part. Ready? And the link's going to be below or over there. It's going to be somewhere. I have faith in you. You'll find it. Okay, ready? Go.